Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to a new Food for Rhino webinar. Uh, today, I'm glad uh, to have with us the uh, Brixis team, Sagar Thorat and Peter Kongs and Kathy Hayes. They are going to talk about the new Rhino inside BricsCAD Beam, which allows using Grasshopper in combination with uh, BricsCAD Beam. They have very nice examples uh, to show. They will start with a brief presentation and then they will uh, make a live demo. Uh, Peter Kongs is the product marketing specialist uh, for BIM and Sagar and is also an architect and Sagar uh, Thorat is also an architectural engineer, researcher and BIM technologist with more than uh, 13 years of experience in the AC market. And yeah, we are uh, really happy that, that uh, Brixis, now an Hexagon company, developed this new solution uh, with Rhino and Grasshopper uh, because we think this is a unique BIM workflow, uh, not only because of the BIM capabilities of BricsCAD, also because of the mechanical uh, functionality, but well, I will let them uh, show you the solution. Um, remember that there is a chat uh, on the right side of your screen. There is a chat you can use at any time. I will try to answer some of the questions and the other questions or your feedback. Uh, I will take note of it. And then at the end of the webinar, during the last 15, 20 minutes, I will pass all that questions to Sagar and, and Peter. So thank you again for being here. And if you want to start, we are ready. Well, thank you, Carlos, for the introduction. Uh, let's get started. So welcome to this webinar, uh, joint webinar with uh, McNeil and Brixis. Today, we will introduce the parametric design workflow natively inside BricsCAD BIM with Grasshopper via Rhino inside. You will learn how to design parametric building and facade structures natively inside BricsCAD BIM. In addition to that, we will introduce a brand new feature called Grasshopper-based components that make parametric design accessible for anyone for prior experience with Grasshopper. So, let me introduce our company first in a few words. Brixis is a global technology company that make, makes the BricsCAD family of CAD products for building design, construction, and manufacturing, and a 24-7 collaboration platform. Our team is based in Ghent, Belgium, but we are global, growing globally. For example, I myself am based in the New York City area, and Sagar is logging in from Singapore. So together with Europe, we are connecting three different time zones today. Brixis is part of Hexagon, a global leader in digital reality solutions, combining sensor, software, and aut autonomous technologies. Brixis and Hexagon together are aiming to transform vital ecosystems in the buildings, industrial facilities, and infrastructure, and manufacturing industries. Brixis is most known for its 2D, 3D general CAD solution, BricsCAD Pro and Lite. This lightweight but powerful software is a cost-effective and modern alternative for legacy CAD tools on the market. It is widely applicable in the building design, construction, civil, and manufacturing industries. BricsCAD Lite is for smaller firms or individual users who want to maximize their cost effectiveness. All Brix's products are based on the strong industry standard DWG-based foundation that BricsCAD Pro and Lite provides. Product features are unlocked by each license level. BricsCAD Mechanical makes mechanical design more accessible and user-friendly, while empowering workflows from design to manufacturing and fabrication. Well, today we are going to talk about BricsCAD BIM, which is a fundamentally new approach to BIM for building design and planning. You can now run Grasshopper natively inside BricsCAD BIM with Rhino inside. And if you want to access all the product features, you can have it all together in BricsCAD Ultimate. This is the only product in the market that connects design, BIM, and fabrication in a single continuously developing workflow. And Brixis 24-7 is a collaboration platform that is most suitable for managing construction projects. 
So I already mentioned that our approach to BIM is unique. It is connected to fabrication directly with BrickSCAD Mechanical, all in a familiar DWG platform. So this makes a seamless transition from CAD to BIM, lowering the barrier to entry. And these are the three pillars of the BrickSCAD BIM vision. A BrickSCAD BIM is the only BIM software that provides a seamless connection to fabrication. BrickSCAD Ultimate provides a single continuously developing workflow from early design through BIM all the way to fabrication. Now, this is especially unique and powerful in combination with parametric design workflows for the design of specific building structures such as scaffolding, curtain walls, and building facades. And I said our approach to BIM is unique, but how? So most BIM software are based on elements that are pre-classified, hence geometrically limited to their purpose. Uh, with BrickSCAD BIM, it's the other way around. You can directly model geometry with complete freedom and classify it later any way you want it. In fact, we have developed powerful AI algorithms to automatically convert your geometry to smart BIM. This direct modeling approach is especially suitable for early designs or very detailed designs like interiors. These models usually have to be remodeled in legacy BIM software, but not in BrickSCAD BIM. Your design geometry automatically gets converted to BIM, making the connection seamless. Together with the powerful BrickSCAD documentation tools, it's like having a design design modeling and a professional CAD tool all in one product. The familiar CAD foundation also makes it easy for companies to transition to BIM. Upgrading your legacy CAD platform to BricsCAD reduces your cost significantly and makes your transition to BIM even simpler. Now, this is the BricsCAD BIM end-to-end -end BIM workflow. And you could learn more about this on our October 26 digital summit, which will soon be accessible on YouTube. In October 26, we released a new version of BrickSCAD BIM, D22. Let me explain how it improves this workflow. But today, we'll only talk about the parametric design features. So now you can natively design parametric geometry inside BrickSCAD BIM with Rhino inside. And we have a brand new feature called Grasshopper-based components that make parametric design accessible to everyone. So stay with us to see Sagar demonstrate all of these features to you. And thank you very much. Um, this was a brief introduction to Brixis and the BricsCAD family of products. Uh, stick around until the end for the Q&A. And I'd like to pass the torch now to Sagar for the exciting product demo. Thank you, Peter. So welcome everyone. And I would be sharing my screen now. So as already mentioned, I'm an architectural engineer and uh, about 12 years of experience in the AEC and the BIM space and have used multiple BIM and computational softwares. So we will be looking today at BricsCAD BIM and Rhino Inside, which is the Grasshopper connection inside BricsCAD. Yeah. So my screen, I hope is visible and I'm clearly audible. If there is any issues, please do let me know. Thank you. So we would perfect. Be, Thank you. Yeah. So we would be looking at this building. Currently, it's a LOD 200 model, and it's a purely solid model, whereas the elements have been classified as walls, curtain walls, columns, and so on. But we are still not having the curtain walls or any cladding materials or any other specific components around it. So let's begin with the first workflow, we will be looking at about three types of workflows today. The first one is the direct connection. We will be using these two arcs to develop a bus station canopy. So we will open Grasshopper directly from BricsCAD. So as you have seen, I've gone to the Grasshopper tab. We have Rhino inside Grasshopper and other icons to bake the building elements. So let's open Grasshopper. And from Grasshopper, you can see that all the standard grasshopper panels are the same, exactly that you get uh, for Rhino as well. And we have an additional BrickSCAD panel, which enables you to connect with BrickSCAD elements. We do have uh, the other panels like Pufferfish, Kangaroo, Lunchbox, and so on, as you might feel suitable to generate your parametric geometry. 
So let's open BrickSCAD, the bus station script. Now uh, this is the bus station script, and these are the parameters of the bus station script. So as you can see, we have this arc, which defines the pillars or the columns and the beam structure and the geometry. We can access the curve directly from Grasshopper, and we can set one BrickSCAD curve. So let's test this out by selecting the more extreme arc. So here you can see that my geometry gets transferred immediately to the more extreme arc, right? So let's switch back by setting the first curve again, which we will use for the demonstration. So here the form generation has happened based upon the certain input parameters that we have given, which has the amount of columns. For example, we can reduce the amount of columns, let's say for example, to six or increase them back to 13 or 12, which gives it more character. We can increase the overhang distance, the thickness of the roof, the height of the columns can also be adjusted, for example, and we can switch back to our original height. We can now access the BrickSCAD profiles, which can be accessed through the BIM data panel so that the profile names can directly be accessed. And these profiles using this drop down menu, you can access all the shapes. So let's experiment a bit with some other shapes, for example, Let's look at the IPN as an option, right? The IPN doesn't give us that variation. So let's look at a round section, which is a circular hollow section. There you go. So we have a circular hollow section applied. So for this demo purpose, we will still stick to the IPE, right? So now we have this geometry and we would like to make it a bit more dynamic. For that purpose, we can use the native grasshopper map mapper tool. So as you know that the mapper tool does consist of different types of curves, uh, linear curves and parabolic curves, and also based upon signs and square root and so on. We will be using the parabolic curve as an example. So here I have the geometry and I'm gonna sort of go into a bit of an extreme to generate the geometry of the canopy itself, right? So this way you can work the same way that you have been working with a Rhino and Grasshopper, you can work with BrickSCAD and Grasshopper as well. Now, the fundamental script remains the same that the, the way you have been designing in Grasshopper. Yeah. Now, here's the difference. What happens is once you have all these extruded elements which have been assigned to particular profiles and that follow the gen generic geometry, you have these extruded elements which you can select, hide, isolate, and so on. And these elements now need to be assigned a BIM property. Now that's the difference. If you have to now bake these elements as BIM entities, we can directly bake them from Grasshopper into BrickSCAD. So you have the bake building element node. Now this node can just be dragged and plugged into the Grasshopper interface. We can see here that we have the geometry as an input. So the first geometry we are gonna input is the column. The second geometry are those two cantilevered steel beams. And the second input is the type, the element type, which basically is the BIM classification that will be associated with the particular geometry generated in Grasshopper. So here we have the BIM column. Now these classifications are directly grabbed from the BrickSCAD data interface. So you can even choose any of these entities to be a BIM railing, maybe a BIM roof, maybe a BIM wall and so on. And this can be accessed directly from the Grasshopper interface through the BrickSCAD panel within Grasshopper, right? So if you're making notes, you can, know, you can make those as well. Now the third uh, input is the spatial location, which basically is the floor where the entity is located or it's going to just identify the exact level within BrickSCAD. The fourth input you can see is the profile name itself, right? So what is the name of the profile? Which profile are we using? Is basically a Euro IPE 220 profile. We can change the profile in the parameters in the earlier stage. And then the last input is the material. Now the materials will be grabbed directly from the BrickSCAD materials. So these are the materials that are associated with the particular project that I'm using today. So I'm gonna use steel, light colored steel as a material for all the steel members. The same goes with the beams. And 
for the roof, uh, for the roof elements, I'm gonna use glass as the material, right? So let's go ahead and bake these, right? So let's just grab these uh, three bake building element nodes and hit bake. You can bake the entities directly and you could assign the entities to a layer. You can directly assign them to a particular layer, assign a material and a color within BricsCAD. And we're just gonna click okay here. And we're gonna give a few seconds for BricsCAD to process the geometry. There you go. Within three seconds, the geometry has been processed. I'm gonna now close this script. I'm not gonna save it, just close it. Close Grasshopper and now I am inside BricsCAD. So let's go through what has been baked, right? So you can directly access the structure tree browser and you can get into the building elements. And as you can see, we have beams classified as beams. We have columns classified as columns and we have other, for example, the roof, which has been classified as a roof. Now, if you do look at the properties of one of these columns in the properties panel, you can directly see the material, the BIM type, the BIM element type, the building, the story that is associated with, which is flow zero, the profile, which is IPE 220, profile standard, profile name, profile size. And further, is it a sheet metal? No. Uh, what is the IFC two by three properties that have been associated directly? Which means from here, if we export this data to IFC, you can directly start coordinating with other, uh, other stakeholders in the project, right? So here we go. The entire BIM properties are uh, completely compliant and you can also uh, access the ISO 19650 uniformat standards and even IP standards inside BricsCAD itself and you can classify them, right? So now let's go in and further add, let's say these are to the level of detail 300 now. What if I wanna take it to the next level to 350 or 400, right? So first thing what I'm gonna do is, I might wanna just hide this roof for the sake of simplicity. And I'm gonna clean up these steel connections here. So into the structure and MEP tab, you have connect structural node over here. And I'm gonna just select these three entities, which are these IP beams and column, enter, and I can clean up the connection directly, right? But I actually don't want to have a welded connection, maybe because of the conditions, maybe it's near the sea, or there are some other conditions that, are, that don't allow me to do a welded connection, or maybe it's too expensive. So what I would like to do is, I would like to bolt these together. So it might take time to design a connection. So why not just access the, the, the detail library within BricsCAD, and we have a bolted connection, which has been uh, prepared, which I can directly use. And I'm just gonna give you a quick glance at the detail. The detail has been developed with the principles of direct modeling. And we also have we used nuts and bolts from the BricsCAD library to call it as a mechanical discrete assembly, right? So here's the power of BIM with mechanical, where you can immediately convert any entity to a mechanical entity as a part and as an assembly, right? So now I'm gonna close this detail. And we are simply going to grab this detail and propagate this detail. Now, propagate is a Brixis BricsCAD invention. What propagate does is it allows you to transfer the typical detail to multiple elements. And we are going to hit propagate now. And we will give BricsCAD some time to process the data. Within a few seconds, it will identify where this detail can be successfully applied. And there you go. It has given me 13 suggestions, right? Now this is AI in action for you, right? Now 13 suggestions out of which it's my choice as a designer, I might want to just exclude the first connection, right? I just want to exclude it. I can exclude others as well, but for the sake of simplicity, now we're just going to exclude the first connection and immediately just hit enter because there are no warnings. There are no exclamation marks. If there are exclamation marks, which means you need to check if there's a clash or not, right? So I'm just gonna enter and there you go. My detail has been successfully applied to all the 12 sets of beams and columns, right? And 
my uh, detail has automatically been classified as a discrete accessory, which is a mechanical entity. You could name it differently. You could classify it differently. It's up to the user. You just need to access the quad. And in the quad, you have different options of classifying a particular geometry, which has already been classified. You can again over classify or override the classification. Now, this is something very critical because uh, the approach over here is a bit, not bit, a lot different. It's an open BIM approach, uh, where a lot, which allows you to pre-classify and post-classify as well, right? Including direct modeling. Now, here you go. We're done with the first part. I'm just going to switch on my roof and my beautiful roof is ready, right? So we have done with the first part. And now let's move to the facade and let's move to the cladding panels, right? So let me just save this file now and just refresh and open it. Right. All right. So the first part uh, is done. The second part of uh, what we would do is we will take a different approach now. We will be using the BricsCAD in, which is the Grasshopper inside BricsCAD components, which if I do not have to open Grasshopper for. So I have these three scripts which apply to three different parts of the glazed curtain panels. Now, I'm going to access the first set of curtain panels, which is type one. These are type one, already classified at LOD 200. Now, these type ones, I would like to associate it with a script, which is curtain wall without fins and top band. So I'm just going to right click here and attach grasshopper data. Simple. I'm not opening grasshopper but I'm attaching the script. So the script is in the back end. Now this is where even a person who doesn't have grasshopper knowledge can use the benefits of parametric design within grasshopper. And now this is type one, let's go to type two, right? So I'm gonna go to type two curtain wall, which is these six walls over here. And these, I would like to have fins on these for some shading. Right, so I'm going to apply the script curtain wall with fins, attach grasshopper data. And there you go, my fins have been associated. Now we will look into the properties panel, right? And in the properties panel, we can access all the parameters that are associated within the script. So here I can sort of change the distance between the fins and also the in, also increase the panel size. So I can go in and type 3000 and you can see that my panel size would change and I can change it back to 1500, right? 1500 is what fits perfect. So let's go for that. And let's say these two uh, curtain wall segments, I can change the fin depth from 400 to 600. So I can access the parameters right over here. I can also switch them off if I would like to switch them off. I can switch them off as well. And I can switch them on, right? Switch off and switch on. So the grasshopper simply works as a virtual geometry, right? I haven't yet baked these elements. So I can still make some changes before baking. Now, I'm gonna change the vertical fin depth from 400 to 600 for only the top walls. And there you go. My bottom levels are uh, a 400 fin, fin depth and the top wall is a 600 fin depth. There we go. Now the last part that we will be uh, using is the type three curtain wall. Now the type three curtain wall, I'm just gonna access into the uh, structure tree browser and apply a script which has curtain wall without fins, but also with the top panel, right? With the top band, uh, not there. It's a clear glazing band. So I'm just gonna attach grasshopper data to that. And there you go. My entire design for the curtain wall is ready. And this is only the glass part, right? So let's say I'm sort of happy with this design and I would like to move to the next stage immediately. And we are going to access the grasshopper panel and we will simply select all these entities at once, which are type one, type two, and type three, and bake grasshopper data. Now, now just, uh, just go back and imagine that we baked the data from Grasshopper before. Now we are baking the data from BricsCAD. Now this is the fundamental difference between the two approaches. 
One is a direct grasshopper approach. Another one is a grasshopper inside BrickSCAD component approach. So here I'm directly gonna bake the data and just say, okay, we'll give BrickSCAD about five, 10 seconds to process the data and it's going to bake my geometry, right? So I just wait for a while. Meanwhile, I grab a sip. Oh, okay. <laughs> Before I could drink water, it's done. Right, there you go. So my curtain wall is designed, ready, and I can move to the next stage of design. Here you go. Now, if you look at this particular member and go to the properties, you can immediately access entire BIM properties, which floor it is located on. Uh, all of this has been automatically assigned as BIM data through the uh, BrickSCAD in components, right? So there you go. So this is done. Now I'm happy with this. I'm done with my second task and I'm running short of time. So maybe within two hours, like I'm, I'm behaving like a real architectural designer now. I just have two hours before I have to present this design to somebody, right? So I need to quickly figure out a random pattern for my cladding, which uh, defines a certain sort of a mural, right? So first thing, I'm just gonna clear the grasshopper data. I'm just gonna clear it out. So we will just see the panels and I'm gonna uh, close this, right? So, and refresh and open it again. There we go. So, and let's just hide the curtain walls over here. So before moving on to the third part, I'm just gonna sort of, um, explain you guys the difference again. So let me just open the same script in Grasshopper now, right? So I'm just gonna open the curtain wall with fins in Grasshopper. So here you go. Now you can see here that all these properties, right? These properties, they can be seen over here in the properties dialog box. So for example, if I have sort of clicked on any of these, all these properties, the width of the rafter or whatever we change there, like the panel distance between them, for example, panel spacing of 1500, all of this is embedded. Now, the important thing to note here is that if you, if you hover onto this icon, this node basically has the value um, of 1500, which has already been inserted. But the most important thing to note is the BCIN. Now BCIN literally stands for BrickSCAD in, right? So in Python, if you type in BCIN and we, we do the underscore and type in a name in front of it, it will immediately um, insert this as a parameter in BrickSCAD. So the grasshopper parameters, the way to recognize those in BrickSCAD and make them editable in BrickSCAD, the trick is BCIN, within brackets and, uh, and use an underscore between the name and the BCIN. So BCIN, remember the code, you can use B, capital B, small c, and capital I, and small n. This is the trick, it's everywhere. So basically all of these nodes share the same thing. If you just hover over BCIN, is what is required for you to be able to recognize the grasshopper property and make it editable in BrickSCAD. I'm purposely repeating it two, three times because if you test it out, you should be able to do it in the right way, right? So BCIN, horizontal profile width, everything in general is BCIN. Even the selection of the main entity, which is basically the wall is again, BCIN underscore entity, yeah? So the original node, when you grab the original node, it's simply going to be an entity. So for example, just grab the node from here, just grab and place it here. You can see the original has only a name called entity. And my changed name is BCIN underscore entity. And this is the reason why you, you don't have to open Grasshopper, but within BricsCAD itself, it just accesses the data and the parameter from Grasshopper. Okay. So, all right. And then further from here, the typical script continues all over. And the properties part, I've already explained to you that how you would bake them 
So the bake building elements is already explained in the previous example. But here also, as you can see, we have the BIM type, um, then we have the geometry, whatever geometry it is, then the BIM type, the spatial location, the profile, and the material, okay? And if you would like to add another property, for example, if you'd like to bake a particular property like a name or a composition or anything else that you would like to add, you can directly use the property node, set property node, which is in the output panel over here. So in the BricsCAD panel, in the output tab, you will have the set property menu. Now this set property node over here has these parameters, which wants you to include the BricsCAD element. It wants you to input the property name and it wants you to input the value and also the property category, okay? And these property category and value nodes can be found here, property name, property value, right? And also within the BIM data, you will get the profiles and so on, okay? So remember, these are important for you to be able to add a property to the baked building element, okay? If there are further questions, I'll be uh, available later on to answer them, okay? so. Now, I'm gonna close this script. Just close it. I'm not gonna save it and close Grasshopper, right? So let's just close this again. Not gonna save it. And then we move uh, to the third part of the demo, which is not a curtain wall, but a cladding wall, right? So let's repeat the step of hiding the curtain wall itself. Hide it. Right, okay. So now our focus is this blank wall over here. And let's now open the script directly in Grasshopper first. Okay, right, there you go. And here you have a pattern. So I would basically like to have a solid cladding panel, but they would need to have some a sort of a character so I'm giving them an extruded uh, triangle kind of a look, which basically breaks the panel into triangulated geometry, which is made out of two sheet metal, sheet metal panels, okay? So let's look at the design itself. I've already finalized the design, but I'm gonna show you some variations. So this is the first thing. This is the BricsCAD entity that I've already selected. So you can always select multiple entities as well. So let me do that. Set multiple entities. Select here, select this entity, enter. Give it a few seconds to just load up and there you go. You have your panels that are now sort of, it actually gives me, actually, personally, I don't like the look. Maybe somebody else would like it, but from my, from my uh, perception, I don't like this. So I would just like to stick to the panels on the face, right? So let me go back to my original design. So let's just select it, the main entity. Okay, and we are gonna toggle some of the parameters here. So let's look at the V count, which is just one, and the U count, which is basically the vertical divisions, right? So uh, then I'm just gonna reduce, let's say to two or three divisions, right? And here I can increase the number of divisions to let's say eight or 12, a bit more extreme, but still, okay, which probably some people might like, or they might want to design it that way. So let's stick back to six, which is our original design. And we can probably work with a bit of randomization. So what I'm using here is a random node, and I'm using a domain to construct the, the, the random pattern. So my domain zero, the domain start is a value three, domain end is a value eight, all right? So, the three value, I'll keep it, but I'm just gonna to toggle the value eight and we'll see how it affects the design, right? So it'll just probably make it a bit more congested design. Uh, therefore I had chosen for eight. So let's stick back to eight. Okay, there we go. So this is something which as a designer, I would like to go ahead with and I feel confident that it might go through my director or somebody, right? <laughs> or if I'm my own office, then I will, probably would have to do another option for it. So another toggling or some more changes that I would like to do here is the panel depth itself. So I will control the panel depth of both random patterns using 
one uh, single value, which is a number slider, right? A number slider, which has upper limit of thousand, because I know that I can't uh, protrude the panels more than a meter into the side boundary, right? So I've, I've actually finalized at 300, but we will look at uh, making it maybe more, maybe 600, why not, right? Maybe looks a bit more dynamic, right? Why not, right? So we can choose this, maybe just keep to that. And all the standard scripting, and then we move finally to baking these elements, right? So here we have unioned the two panels, uh, all the three panels together, which includes the top triangle profile. And I've solidified them with a particular thickness, which is a sheet metal panel thickness of four millimeters, right? So here we have a union of all the four solids. And I'm just gonna union them and you can see that this is the first random, okay? And then we have the second random, right? So, right, there you go. Our design is ready to be baked. And we will now move to the bake element, which is again, to repeat, bake building element to be used from the BrickSCAD panel, right? Why BrickSCAD panel? Because the bake building elements will directly get associated to BIM classifications, right? With materials and with data, with metadata. So let's select these two. Uh, bake building element nodes and simply bake them. And there you go. I'm done baking. So I'm going to close the script, not save any changes, close Grasshopper, and there you go. My cladding panels are ready. And each one of these, you can see it's a bit more, but still. And you can see that this is my first part of the assembly, which is a sheet metal piece, which is one piece. Yeah, I'm doing it into one single piece, one part, because I don't want any leakage issues. So I wanna have a sheet metal, which is like that, exactly like that. And all these are variable sheet metals, right? All of these are different sizes here. Now this is gonna be fun when we move to the next part, uh, which we will do in a few months time, we will take these panels to fabrication and you love that with BricsCAD's sheet metal functionality. All right. so. These have already been classified as coverings, right? So you can just, I'm just gonna quickly check them. So these are coverings and they have been already associated with the cladding wall member, right? We have other coverings, which are our spandrel panels, but these are specifically associated with the cladding wall member directly with BIM properties, right? So I'm gonna delete these because I would like to uh, use the same script, right? I'm gonna just save this. So you might be thinking, why is he doing it and deleting it? So I'm just gonna show you the second approach now using the same script, right? So which is basically the BCIN component. So the same script, now let's use the attach grasshopper data within BricsCAD without opening grasshopper, attach grasshopper data, select the facade uh, wall and associate this data to it, done, okay? Right, the same functionality, but a method which anybody, and anybody could use. A person even without grasshopper knowledge can use it and he can even change the design. Why? Because within the properties, the design is now available or the prop parameters are available for me to change. So here below you can see grasshopper data. I can uncheck the visibility, check it on again. And the visibility is on. And the vertical divisions, I will now change again from six to 12, but within BricsCAD, right? We'll just give it a few seconds to process. And there you go. We have 12 divisions. I'm gonna switch back to six because I like six, <laughs> okay? And then we can also change the other random pattern values. And let's do the final change uh, of changing the panel depth to 200, which is very less, no character. Now let's take it to 600, which we did in the earlier version. And there you go, right? So without using Grasshopper, or sorry, without opening Grasshopper, 
the script works in the back end and the person who could just be a designer without any computational bim knowledge the person could just use the script in the front end on brickscad and do all the necessary design changes and access the script right from the bim project browser from brickscad right so last but not the least let's bake our design and have done with it now right so let's bake the grasshopper data so since i've already selected this wall and i can just bake i can assign a particular layer to it material or color which we have already done in the script so we will not reassign it and say okay and my baking process should take yeah 2 seconds done right there you go baking done and now we are going to clear the grasshopper data just clear means just select which wall it was applied to enter and we are done so our design is ready the covering has its ifc properties has its bim properties and now we will be using the same design in our next uh, webinar well when we will announce it we will take it to fabrication and that's the combination of brickscad bim taken into brickscad mechanical where we will design the frame we will design we'll unfold the sheet metal we will take it to a cnc and so on yeah so i think with this uh, i am i am done we have covered the design of almost all the facades in this building and as a final just to i'm going to hide the curtain wall original volumes and there you go our design is here with our canopy for the bus station and this should be the end of my demo i would hand over the session again back to carlos and peter thanks guys thank you everybody excellent sagar a very nice presentation uh, we enjoy it a lot i really love brickset beam and the propagate function and other ai functions and also as i mentioned before the connection to brickset mechanical i think many in the steel in the beam industry many people forget that more than 80% of the components of a building are mechanical components so i think it's what you offer is a unique solution and let's see if there are some questions from the audience the chat is open well it was open during during all the all the webinar while there are some questions from the from the viewers i wanted to ask you if, if you have tried because with the rhino inside technology allows that you can also run any of the grasshopper plugins uh, inside brickscad beam have you tried any so you mean the uh, kangaroo and puffer fish and so on right any yeah. of the available grasshopper apps on food for rhino that work yes yes we have uh, the latest we, version we have could be those. could be run also inside brickscad beam sure. and i wanted to ask you if you have any experience if you have tried any uh i have tried the uh, puffer fish myself mm -hmm. nice and nice. Uh, with the latest version i am still to try but v21 mm -hmm. i did uh, try a few of those so we definitely can uh, look at trying and maybe showcasing those as well perfect yeah also with some of these uh, optimization plugins or solvers etc i think it's Yeah, the FEA to, one to arrive is, to uh, a to a solution. Yeah, so the FEA one, which basically we are looking at using a uh, element analysis plugin with mm -hmm. one of our customers in Australia. So they are interested to the, so they are basically a very hardcore user of Rhino Grasshopper, and they recently migrated to Brickscad BIM, and they are looking to analyze uh, structures, which is basically bridge structures. using rhinos fea so that is something which is an exploration and we definitely would uh, so stay tuned i think that is something which we can look at presenting in the future as a as a live customer case that would be great yeah we can uh, for sure organize a a part 3 of this uh, series of webinars there is one question by francesca taglieri if i pronounce it right 
Um, can you tell us a bit more about how the geometry comes in and goes out? I would like to understand the workflow from a wider point of view. How can we embed this process in a BIM workflow? Sure. All right. So uh, I might probably want to share my screen and explain it. Okay. If, if it's okay. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So to answer that question uh, in general, what we should know is that within BricsCAD, so it's basically a building smart certified uh, BIM software. Number one, we are certified for IFC two by three, IFC four, and the data classifications can be automatically done or manually done. So the data classifications are directly embedded as part of BricsCAD's workflow, okay? So within the data panel, you can actually look at the properties. You can see here that we have IFC, and the user properties can be defined. You can even add a set of properties, for example, or any of the unique uh, uniformat properties can also be added, or you can import. For example, you can just import any of these properties uh, as quantities as an XML sheet. So that's how you bring in data. But then when you're using Grasshopper, uh, let, let me open the same script again. So I'm gonna open, yeah, just open Grasshopper here. Okay, so you see this, right? So over here, uh, this panel, right? Now, within the BricsCAD panel, okay? You can see here, the first thing is what you need is a geometry. It could be a line, an arc, a curve, a solid entity. So that's where you connect to. So the entity that you select in this case is directly your first geometry choice. And this entity within BricsCAD is nothing but, uh, let's say a level of detail 200 wall, which is already classified as a wall. So here you can see that this is just a wall. And now I would like to further detail it out. So when I use uh, Grasshopper and I just change, let's say the design of the cladding itself, further down, my geometry that is already recognized in Grasshopper can then later be used as output geometry. And from output geometry, I can directly use a BIM type. Now here is where the data gets associated. And the BIM type node over here is basically over here, this one. You can see the BIM type, it has icon of a house and the tag, right, BIM type. And it's the same icon that you can use you can see directly on the BIM classification as well, the icon over here, right? So this exact classifications are grabbed or let's say pulled from the BricsCAD data. And once it's pulled, it's a direct classification of metadata that is related to the geometry. And then that type directly inserts into the type and the geometry which is to be baked. So this is how they get connected. So this node, is important. It's called as the bake building element node. The bake building element node consists of the geometry, which is the grasshopper geometry, then the BIM type, which is the BIXCAD metadata classification type, then uh, BIM levels, which is basically the level one, level two, level three, level four, and so on. And then fourth property is the profile. So if there's a specific profile like a beam or a column, you can associate that as well directly as metadata. And the last property is material. And this is all that you need to get your BIM classifications. And the, and the geometry directly gets baked, right? So if I now close this, and if you look at one of the uh, baked geometries, right? So let's look at, for example, this member over here, right? So this member was baked directly. So if you look at this member and you look at the property, it will directly give you the BIM property, the type as a member, the name, the description, the floor, and also the IFC properties, which is the length, the volume, the gross volume. You can add a fire rating and so on. And same goes with, let's say, structural elements. So for example, this is a structural beam, which was baked as a geometry, but then classified with BIM data. So this is how the BIM data gets connected through the nodes that are made accessible in Grasshopper. 
Nice. Thanks for the explanation. Uh, Francesca adds that, um, thanks, this is uh, more clear now, but um, how to integrate that process with a BIM model in Revit or OBD? Because they typically use other software for deliverables sure. uh, production. Sure. So in general, uh, Brix's philosophy is in lines with the open BIM philosophy. And therefore we support IFC as a classification and also as a data exchange format, right? So that is which we would have to understand. Uh, let's say as a group of BIM members, as global BIM members, we know that it is important to have a neutral data format in the market today for all the stakeholders so that there is a limited time lost in the interoperability. Therefore, we fully support IFC, IFC 2x3, IFC 4, and you can directly share the entire model or parts of the model with anybody using any other BIM software, you can share the BricsCAD model and the data will directly be used by that particular software. Vice versa, you can also bring in IFC models within BricsCAD. And the best part about IFC in BricsCAD is it's editable. Any IFC uh, model or element or entity you bring from Revit or any other BIM software is editable. Whereas in Revit, it's not editable. This is the fundamental difference. In BricsCAD, you can edit the IFC entity. You can literally, uh, let's consider this model has been bought from Revit, okay? And you can see here that I'm able to literally select this surface. Okay, now this is extreme because I'm just gonna use a push-pull, right? But this is still a BIM entity. The classification doesn't go away. And it's still IFC, it still has the BIM properties, you can still collaborate, but it's still editable. So we do not distinguish or distinct, or let's say separate between any of the softwares. We treat them all as one. Therefore, IFC is the key format within BricsCAD. Thank you. I hope Francesca is happy with your explanation. Otherwise, Francesca, please use the chat again. And to the audience, if there are any other questions, we still have a few minutes left. Well, I wanted to add also that the, of course, in order to use Rhino inside Briscat Beam, you need a Rhino license and a Briscat Beam license, but the connection, the plugin that connects both platforms is free of charge and you can download it through Food for Rhino. It will forward you to, to BricsCAD website, but it's it's there. It's just one executable you need to, to connect the two platforms. Yeah, Francesca says, uh, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to you for, Thank you for viewing this webinar and for your questions. Any other questions from the audience? It seems people are a bit shy today. Maybe it's the winter weather, different Maybe we were, time zones. Maybe we were, we were really clear yeah, about everything. It was, and I like the different uh, examples. And of course, I love when it's not just a presentation, but people can see a workflow, practical workflow. Exactly. We wanted to show you how you can apply all of these new features in certain areas of the building design and construction. Nice. One thing about the connection is that uh, with V22, it's more powerful. So I, I, I can clearly notice the difference between V21 and V22. Mm -hmm. I could literally do so much with such a scale of a model with three, four different designs and, in, and it moves quite fast. So the data exchange is, is, is quite fast. Yes. We, have, uh, we have one more comment by Galida in this case. Uh, she, I guess, uh, it's a woman, sorry if not. Uh, if, if there is any webinar planned uh, in Russian, in Russian language, or for well, that's Russians? Good. That's a good question. Um, we are, the webinar we are planning with you, um, hopefully early next year, I think will be similar to this one. 
but um, I know our marketing team might be able to translate this or add uh, subtitles or so this is a very good question. I will I'll definitely talk to our team about it, see if we can we can maybe add subtitles to this webinar or something. Actually, um, I was talking recently to Sabit, who is your distributor in Russia and also Rhino reseller uh, to do something in, in Russian. So um, I hope soon there will be some news about an event for, for Russian customers. Yes, and our summit uh, will be will be translated. We'll, we'll mm -hmm. add subtitles to our summit in multiple Perfect. languages. So that, that will be available on YouTube very soon. Perfect. One more question by John Frost. Uh, hi, how about the size of the files when includes mechanical elements? So in general, the file size um, varies from anywhere between three to four MB. For, for this model that I was using today, the size is about six to seven MB. But when you add mechanical, it might go up to like 16 MB. Or the more detail you add, it might go to 30 MB. The biggest file I've seen with a very large brewery plant with steel structures was about 60 MB. And that included three, four models together, which had a steel structure, piping. Then we had some mechanical assemblies uh, and also some other LPG tanks. So around in that range, anywhere between four and 60, depending on the level of detail that you're adding. But the file size, uh, if you compare that with the Revit, it's definitely smaller. It's uh, or any other software in general. I've seen that because of the multi threading capabilities, it's quite lighter. BricsCAD uh, uses multi threading as a bone, as a backbone, as a spine. So I think the, the, the geometry, the way it is captured and graphically stored, it's quite small. It probably might be one fourth, something like that. Yeah. We're trying to improve it even further. Uh, our data scientists are continuously working on such topics. Right, thanks. Okay, I think there are no more questions. So thank you again. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you here and we, we like it very much. And to the audience, in case you miss uh, one part of the webinar or you join it later, uh, it's being recorded and it will be available on this same uh, YouTube link uh, right now after it finishes, which will be now. So you can watch it at any time. So uh, Peter, Sagar, thank you again. Hope to thank you. Thank uh, you, everyone. see you thank soon. You. Uh, thank you, Carlos. Have, have a nice day, a nice morning for Peter, a nice evening to Sagar and nice afternoon, evening, or whatever to, to the rest of the audience. See you soon. Thanks. Stay healthy. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Thank you, Carlos. Everyone. Bye. Thanks, Carlos. Bye.